A few months ago, Deep Sea Coder completely changed the game when it came to coding with AI, and Mistral has been right behind them along with some closed source models like Cloud 3.5 that offer really compelling AI coding workflows. And the one thing that each of these models has focused on and maximized is the context window. The idea being that the more code it can take in and the more code it can give you back out, the more powerful the tool is. And to complement this, we've also seen AI-first editors entirely, um, AI-first tools like Cursor, and the number of very well thought out VS Code plugins and plugins for other common editors. But what I wanna talk about today is something entirely different. It's sort of similar to tools like Olama, but just for coding and lets you use local and closed source LLMs, basically whichever is cheapest and most available to you. And what's cool is it's open source. This tool is called Aider and or AIDER, and I wanna tell you more about it. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So Paul, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this, but I've been following Aider for the last few weeks, and I really should have found this sooner because it's one of my favorite tools for programming locally. Generally speaking, I don't really like coding with assistance. I kind of will go back and forth between Cloud 3.5 or another tool that I'm using or Deep Sea Coder, and then go from there. As a professional software engineer, that's kind of my flow. I know others might do differently. And what's cool with Aider is it removes one of my biggest pet peeves with coding models. And it also removes one of the bottlenecks of even just code completion models, which is having a limit on how much code they can actually give you after the fact. If you tried to program with ChatGPT early on, you know that one of the biggest limitations was when you would have a program being written by ChatGPT and it would just cut out within like the first third of the program or on the first of eight different files it would need to give you. And this latest update to Aider, which is V0500, claims to give you infinite output regardless of which LLM you're using, which is quite a tall claim. And although I'm not going to do a ton of live coding, if you'd like to see me do more live coding in the future, please let me know in the comments below. So the other wild thing about this latest release is that AIDR wrote 66% of the code in the release, which means that currently most of this tool, which enables AI coding, was actually written by AI itself, which is kind of a cool thing to look at. And before I get too far into this, I should also say, if you're not following Paul Gautier, you should just go follow him. He has a lot of other really interesting insight when it comes to pricing of APIs and just digging into really interesting aspects of LLMs, especially for coding, that I just don't think are covered enough, even on X, with how much LLM news comes out here. And I also highly recommend using this on OpenRouter, and OpenRouter is what I've built a number of AI apps with, and it's just awesome, so go use it. So again, I was not misspeaking when I said that the models can output as much code as they want without regard for their output token limit. And you might ask, like, how on earth is this actually possible? And Paul gives us some really interesting insight here. He says, all LLMs have a limit on how many tokens they can output. When they hit the limit, they stop and raise an error. Aider works around this by asking them to continue where they are left off in the next message. Now, you might think this is pretty straightforward, but this can be kind of challenging to actually retain the initial context you gave them. And of course, different LLMs handle sort of regurgitating and taking back in the same input context in different ways. But what's cool is when models are good, like Cloud Sonnet, this is actually pretty straightforward. And Paul mentions that he used Cloud Sonnet to actually write most of this last release. And there are a number of other developers who claim to use this and really like it. And one of my favorite aspects of Aider is it's just simple. It's really straightforward. You just run it with the model you want or with whichever um, API you want, and it just works. It's not really getting in your way like a lot of these other tools or, and, and it's not trying to do too much. You know, I like Cursor and I like some of the more advanced plugins for VS Code that kind of attempt to do completion. And they're really powerful, but frankly, they kind of get in the way um, for me as a professional developer. I think maybe if you didn't really know which direction you wanted to take, these tools could be super useful. But for me, I liked kind of concise inputs uh, and concise production, and then going from there. Still, mostly I use these tools to produce boilerplate or things that I don't really want to do um, or use my time for, for things like AWS configs and complicated things like that. They're also great for cleanup scripts. I just finished writing a pipeline that does time lapses and Cloud Sonnet was an incredible tool that definitely just took hours of work away from me and it was fantastic. So let's look at the full change log and see what Aider is all about. So what's cool right off the bat is you can see how much Aider actually wrote of the release 
in these kind of graphs here. And it's cool to see that consistently each release has actually had more contributions from Aider and fewer from humans, which is kind of interesting to see. And if you guys are curious about this, I will say that most of the Amazon AWS APIs that aren't like for common languages and all the documentation has been machine generated since about like 2018, but that's been going on for quite some time. And again, what I like here is you can use local models with different chat templates along with APIs, which is pretty cool. And I will say I predominantly use Aider with DeepSeek and Cloud Sonnet specifically. I haven't used it with a number of other models. And I will say that right now, Aider is kind of meant to work with these models. They're working on Gemini support supposedly, and I'm not really a huge fan of Gemini, but it'll be cool to see more models actually supported. And it's also cool that all of these changes are completely out in the open. And if you wanna check out their GitHub, all of their code is right here. So this is another reason why I love these projects. Um, the closed source projects are interesting, but especially when you're dealing with API keys and, and sometimes things that could cost you hundreds or thousands of dollars a month if they were misused, I think it's really cool to see this. And the Aider website is pretty cool. It's pretty much just their documentation and some pretty basic representations of how you should use it. The whole idea is you can connect it to basically any LLM. If you click this, it pretty much just shows you what it currently supports, which is GPT-4.0, Cloud 3.5 Sonic, Cloud 3 Opus, and DeepSeek Coder V2, along with a number of free models and local models. But basically the way you use it with local models is just running Olama, providing whatever you're using on Olama as an API, and then you feed that into Aider. Aider also has its own leaderboards, which I think is pretty cool. And unsurprisingly, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet is at the top of this list. The configuration can be um, pretty complex. Really, it's relatively straightforward. Connecting to LLMs is also pretty straightforward if you've ever just used an API. Um, I do wanna try using Grok with this because Grok is just so fast, it's really fun to use. You can also run this in Docker and do a number of other pretty cool things. You can even run it in GitHub code spaces, which is pretty cool. It's kind of GitHub and Microsoft's version of uh, Google Colabs. There is really fantastic documentation with how to actually use it. And if you guys want to see a full tutorial on this, I can go ahead and do that with their latest feature of infinite output, which I think is pretty cool. They even have videos here. So if you don't want to watch my videos, you can watch their videos. I do like the different um, types of chat modes that they have, which basically is just changing the initial system prompt. So they have code, ask, and help. And these are things that I'm surprised kind of are not present in a lot of these AI first editors and or kind of interface tools, mostly because changing this initial context can va vastly change what completion looks like. Um, for instance, if you want to just code, you're probably not looking for a lot of like explainer comments provided by the LLM. Help is a great version of this where it gives you a lot of insight into what's actually going on while you're coding. For a long time, you could actually toggle some of this stuff once you dug into some settings with, with GitHub's coding assistant. And ask is pretty cool because it's basically where you can prompt in between completions and get sort of some advice as to what direction you might want without having to switch windows. So a lot of the idea with Aider is it's a little closer to what you're doing. It's easier to interact with and faster to interact with and has a very minimal um, terminal based interface, which I actually like. I know some people who are less technical don't actually like this, but this is a tool that's just immensely powerful and I think deserves way more attention than it's getting right now. What's also cool is Aider supports images and web pages, which maybe you wouldn't have thought. There's also a really fantastic browser interface if you don't like using it in the console, which I think is pretty cool. And I think this is one of the best tools you can pair with powerful coding models to get the most out of them. Obviously, some engineers are going to have their own workflows that, 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 or maybe agentic workflows they put together, and Aider doesn't quite do that just yet but I think we're going to see very quickly, probably within the next six months, some really interesting updates that might go in that direction. The most powerful thing that Aider does, which is something that I've also used a lot of other kind of plugins that connect to LLMs for coding to do, is um, specifying coding conventions. So making sure that my code is properly formatted, which there were tools to do in the past, but since they weren't LLM based, they were pretty strict and kind of rigid to use. And um, linting and testing is another one. So automatically writing tests or like recommending tests uh, without just giving me the boilerplate and then having to fill in the blanks, I love. Um, one of the things that I'm still completely obsessed with is Mistral's coding models and their sort of fill in the blank flow, which I still think is incredible. Cause like I can just write kind of a wireframe of what I wanted to test, have it get close to being right or right on the first shot. And for me, that's where I've gotten probably the most initial kind of immediate productivity gains from large language models and then also long term when you know I don't have to spend as much time writing tests and then once they work 
you know, if I screw something up later down the line and a test catches it, that's saving me hours of time right there as well. So what's cool is, you know, this tool enables a lot of really cool things that otherwise I'd have to kind of build my own tooling for. I think generally, if you can avoid writing your own tooling, that's great because then you can just work on what you actually want to work on. And this kind of wrapper infrastructure around really fantastic models, I think is a direction that a lot of things are going to start taking. Because at some level, like why would you want to rebuild something all the way from the ground up when you could just provide some better templates or provide different system prompts and a very kind of unifying interface on top of it and think about who the user is, right? Like obviously, What's really hard for ChatGPT or OpenAI and Anthropic is when they create an interface, they're trying to create an interface for everyone. And I think Anthropic did a great job with artifacts in giving people more options or giving kind of more interactivity with how you interact with their large language models. And artifacts do a great job of this, but um, they're not everything that everyone's looking for. And I think tools like this, when you can access an API safely and reasonably and have it be kind of application specific, in this case, specifically for coding or talking about coding or kind of being talked through how you should build something. I think these are some of the most powerful tools you see. So do you guys like this? Have you used Olama? Have you used Ada before? Uh, did I say something, did I not mention a feature of this that you think is really cool? Um, I should also mention voice to code is actually very fun and useful. I don't use it a lot, but it's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, so let me know what you think about Ader. Um, let me know how you code with AI or how you're learning to code with AI in the comments. I really want to hear all about it so I can keep making content you guys want to listen to. So as always, I hope you learned something. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one.